What's up, y'all? This is Daniel. We're proud of the Southland Kennels. Two weeks in the fence. Um, so far, so good. Getting along. Nobody's escaped. Knock on wood. Hope that don't happen. Fence is still alive. The Energizer is still working. I wanted to make a quick video, though. I don't know how quick it'll be, but I want to make a quick video on the white English, the old southern white, whatever you want to call it, versus the American Bulldog. Everywhere that you read on the internet, you read that that's what the American Bulldogs used to be called. So a lot of people, let me walk around the kennel. Come on. Come on, y'all. A lot of people assume that if they got a white American Bulldog, they can call it a Old Southern White or a White English. And I still think some people that know that are still wrong in some of their theories, but that's how opinions and theories work they're just um individuals opinions not really a lot of them's not backed up with facts 100 percent um there's some there's some gaps in there and we got to fill those gaps with our opinions and what makes the most sense to us so a lot of people think that the american bulldog has to be 75 percent white which makes me bring this topic up and the reason they think that the American Bulldog has to be 75% white is because they read all this stuff about the white English and the old Southern white. So, I've said this before in one of my videos, but when they used Mac the Masher, which was a brindle dog, to me that just kind of cut everything out um, as far as the white goes. John D. Johnson and Allen both used that dog, and they used him a lot. So when it comes to the color white, I don't believe that the American Bulldogs have to be 75% white. No one's ever going to change my mind on that, I don't believe, because they use Mac the Masher. And they use them a lot. Now, when they set out to revive the American Bulldog, I don't think they revived the American Bulldog. I've said this before. I believe they created the American Bulldog. In fact, they give the dogs a new name. Now, whether they give the dog... Uh, why they give the dogs a new name i haven't asked alan that john d johnson no longer around to ask that but i believe it's because they um well i have a couple opinions i'm not going to get into that but the fact is they give the dogs a different name they called them the american pit bulldog and then they changed it to american bulldog and they changed it to that from multiple different names and, and that's one opinion i have that i'll share is there were so many different names based on geographical location i think they just wanted to call it an american bulldog because all of those places were in america um with that being said a lot of people you know have been nice about it but they've expressed their opinion they wish i would go back to the more white dogs um and here's what i'm gonna do if a white dog in the litter is the best pup in the litter to me then i'll keep that white dog and if a brindle dog's the best dog in that litter i'll keep that brindle dog don't want to keep a solid black dog like Roan, but i'm more than happy to keep a, a dog like Neelan, who is predominantly black but he's got a lot of white on his head Neelan hasn't really showed me that um he just really can't do a job out in the field because of the color of his fur in fact Neelan's the reason i started all of this we're gonna make another lap just excuse my it's messy out here we finally got some good weather y'all come on let's make another lap um so the next thing those those white english dogs those old southern whites now the whatever you want to call them like i said just a minute ago it's based on geographical location people had different names for them with that being said People in different geographical locations had different types of dogs. Even though they, a guy in Florida might have called his dogs white English, a guy in northern Georgia and Alabama might have called their dogs white English, they probably had different types of dogs, meaning some people have massive dogs, like really big dogs, 100 plus pounds. Some of them had uh, smaller dogs, like these bulldogs, you know. The, what, a, what people don't understand is that a bulldog ain't really supposed to be a big dog. Even the original bulldog from everything I've found were 45 to 50 pound dogs. So that being said, the route I'm going is small as I can go without being too small. Um, I don't have a, a set weight in my mind, but 
I'll share it on Instagram. Teleco, which is the dog on the right, he's 18, 18, 20 months old, 66 pounds on the full belly of food and water. I weighed him the other day. Iris over there, uh, she's right at two years old, I think, or approaching two years old. Um, 62 pounds on the full belly of food and water. Neyland, which is right around the corner here, 69 pounds. I really don't want them to go more than the kneeling if i can keep my dogs between like 50 and 65 pounds with the lower end being my females and the higher end being my males um i'll be happy because those are dogs that i can handle and those are dogs that i feel like um from what i've seen in my experience and what other people have told me from their experience and there's no right or wrong way when you're talking about experience uh, everybody has their own experience a, there ain't much that i can think of well let me tell you this there ain't nothing that i need my dogs to do that a 55 60 pound dog uh can do that uh or can't do that an 80 pound dog could do but uh, hopefully i said that right so i don't need my dogs to do anything out here for me um uh, that i don't feel like uh, a dog their size could do meaning these dogs I don't, I don't feel like an 80 pound dog gives me an advantage. You're feeding it more, that's more weight on its joints. Um, it's just a bigger dog to handle. You know, I just don't see the, I don't see for me personally, and this is my breeding program, and a lot of people ain't gonna agree with it and you don't have to agree with it, but I just don't see me having 80 pound plus dogs and definitely not a hundred pound dogs to me they're just oh man i can't i can't imagine a hundred pound bulldog um i've seen them i've seen them and they're massive people think that a hundred pounds ain't big a hundred pound dog's a big dog and 105 110 pound dogs are a real big dog and i've seen them that look capable of still being somewhat athletic and being able to work but i just why i don't you know and i'm not i'm not down in anybody that breeds dogs that big it's just uh for me these smaller dogs are more nimble on their feet and i've seen them wrestle down 200 250 plus pound hogs and of course they got to put up a fight to control them but they can do it and an 80 pound dog or a 100 pound dog do that too yeah but i just feel like they're going to tire out quicker um and you know, like I said, everybody that I talked to, um, I've said this before, 70, 75 pounds is a big dog. So I think I'm on the right track in that sense. Um, but make no mistake about it, the, the American Bulldog is not a white English or an old Southern white. I don't think there's any American Bulldogs that could be considered old Southern white, but that's just me. Definitely not white English, but those dogs, those old Southern whites and those white English, English whites, whatever you want to call them, those are the foundation dogs of these dogs here. I think if you, if we trace their dogs back 10, 12 generations, if we could, which most people can't with American Bulldogs, they, a lot of people don't understand that. You go back that far, you're going to end up with blank pedigrees. But if we could trace them back and we could, it could be factual, I think we'd find those types of dogs. Um, Another reason about the color that the color don't matter to me is even in the the white dogs, even if they had a white dog, these the guys were breeding it to whatever would work for them. So, from my experience with color, you can have two white dogs, and that don't mean that everything behind them is white. That don't mean everything they're going to have is white. Um, if we if we start basing a breed especially a bulldog a working bulldog off of color and limit them dogs to color and we just we uh we're giving ourselves a big handicap by doing that if we had to call all the black dogs or the white and black dogs or the, any dog that had more than 25 percent color we'd we're not gonna end up with good dogs sorry um they was breeding curs and catahoulas that's a couple of the dogs that i've heard about them breeding in the south and i believe in some of these dogs you can see those uh those cur type looking dogs with the ears and and things like that and then in the colors the red dogs uh the the tan dogs things like that so i hope i i 
once again i've came out here and filmed a video and restarted it so hopefully i mentioned everything that i wanted to mention sometimes it's hard to keep track i'm just been out here getting these dogs to try to walk the fence line that's one thing i wish the these two dogs right here would do better is walk the fence line Neyland does a real good job at that i don't even have to weed eat in the fence easy and he he uh not keeps it knocked down y'all come on but an update on the kennel after all that white english and american bulldog top or talk excuse me an update on uh I don't know if I'd call it a kennel no more. I'm moving away from kennels, but um, we're gonna try, how about the farm? Yeah, that's more like it, an update on the farm. Um, I'm in the search for some goats right now. Whenever I find a, a good deal, I want good quality goats too this time. I want good quality dogs. I believe I have them for my likings anyhow, and I want good quality goats. As soon as I find them, they're gonna be right out here with these dogs what i'm going to do is uh when these dogs get bred hopefully everything goes well and we get some pups off of them i'm gonna be looking to keep one out of this litter i'm hoping after the testing that i got to do on the current litter which we're just down to four pups i hope i get to keep something off that and i want to breed those dogs together if it does not work out how i want to work out i'm i will more than likely i'm going to breed kneeling to emory i'm gonna do that breeding i'm gonna breed emory back to neyland those two dogs as far as uh neyland, that would be the complete package for me I and mean, as far as uh the size the the phenotype the the temperament um temperament being number one the health of it um I would have a larger selection of pups to pick from and it would get me closer to what i'm going for so hopefully these dogs right here when we get some goats in here are quit being so goofy they like to play around right now but i know once they get goats in here they'll <laughs> they'll cut that out hopefully they're still young though they're they're both about two years old so they got a lot of pup in them but yep that that's it man uh we're gonna have we're gonna have us some farm dogs out here with these american bulldogs we're going to get back into it and if i'm the only one out there doing it i'm just the only one out there doing it but anyways until next time this is daniel with pride of the southland kennels i appreciate y'all watching